Welcome to Sailing Cayenne 2. Join us as we explore the beautiful Chesapeake Bay in our newly refitted Morganout Island Catch and watch as we're preparing the final touches for our 2021 snowbird journey from Baltimore, Maryland to sunny tropical destinations. 29 months of uh, interesting hard work on everybody's part. Hi everybody and welcome to Cayenne 2. A special shout out to our subscribers and to those of you who aren't subscribers, at the end of this program we'd love it if you'd like us and subscribe. We'll try and keep you informed with all the up-to-dates of what we're doing and maybe give you some educational stuff as well. So it's a cold month, we're rounding the corner on January up here in Chesapeake Bay and we are working on a few projects. So this year we have to work on uh, solar, we have to work on some new fittings on the boat, and today I thought we would focus on solar. So we've already decided what we're going to be doing in the next month or two, installing solar panels, we're adding lithium batteries, we're adding a management system, uh, DC to DC, and we're adding an inverter. So I'm going to go over all of those components today, give you a quick uh, one or two seconds, one or two minutes on everything, and take a look. So to get started on solar, the first thing you need to do is calculate your energy needs. So we conducted an audit of all the devices we use on a daily basis. We excluded the windlass since we always run the engine anyway. When you see your dependency on energy this way, you quickly realize the importance of calculating carefully and generously. So for energy generation, we used a best case, worst case scenario on a 24 hour period. Our best case scenario showed a small surplus of energy. Our worst case scenario with zero solar and 25 amps from the engine depleted our battery bank to 155 amps. Putting this in perspective, this is approximately a 50% depth of discharge, which when using lithium batteries is a great place to be for recharge purposes. We added a 10% plus or minus factor for usage. Of course, if we need to, we can reduce that consumption considerably and extend our endurance. Using the generator as shore power, we have the fastest recharge time of two hours. The charger inverter will charge as high as 75 amps on shore power. The system is good for backup if you have a failed alternator or you have a solar module failure. So everybody has their own preference of charging in solar. Ours is to use a hybrid solution and enjoy the comforts of life while sailing. So we shopped around and looked for solar panels. For a couple of months, we looked at various types. We looked online, we looked on Amazon, uh, we read quite a few articles, and the one thing that kept coming up to us was, what is the warranty and what is the longevity of the vendor? So for this reason, we ended up focusing on Renogy. We were impressed with their warranty, and I'll show you a little bit about why we chose their product. Now before we start, I just want to mention this is not a paid commercial or an advertisement for Renogy. When we looked at Renogy products, information was easy to obtain and the knowledge base and the forums were very helpful. We ordered online, we experienced good service, we just have a good feeling about their products and hope that we're not disappointed. Since we decided to use our Bimini top to mount four 100 watt panels, we like the feature of being lightweight and flexible. With a weight of less than five pounds, we figured they'd be easy to install. Also, since heat buildup can be an issue with any flexible panel, we think we've got a solution for this, which we'll show you in part two when we do the installation. Since we learned that flexible panels have a shorter lifespan compared to other panels, Renogy's efficiency warranty was a major factor in our buying choice. If Renogy stays around for 25 years, they could possibly be the best warranty in the business with their five-year 95% warranty. So using four 100 watt panels wired in parallel gives us over 21 amps to the MPPT controller. Some of you may remember trying to find that one burned out light on a Christmas tree. Well, it's the same issue when you wire solar panels in series, and everyone knows how good sailboats are at casting shadows. So it's sayonara to the power. The pro to wiring solar panels in series is that the amp draw remains constant 
making longer cable runs possible without increasing the wire size. In our case, the distance from our Bimini to the controller is less than 20 feet, making parallel the best solution for Cayenne 2. The topic of charge controllers is interesting. There are different types of controllers on the market. There's pulse width modulation. There's MPPT, which is maximum power point tracking. Uh, you have a choice of using either one of those. Uh, there are pros and cons to using serial and parallel wiring, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But what's interesting in the charging is that most of these solar systems are usually used for RV, marine, boondockers, and anybody who has a charging system usually has a couple of additional requirements, especially for marine uh, application, where normally you want to isolate your starting battery and you want to be able to charge your other batteries. Now, in any other fashion, that would be fine, but the problem today is that with the newer batteries coming out, for example, lithium uh, phosphate batteries, of which you see one behind me, well, you cannot charge that battery using an alternator charge. There are some differences. So we looked around the marketplace. Again, we ended up with Renogy, and we found a device uh, behind me called a DC to DC charger. Now what the DC to DC charger does is basically takes the charge from the alternator, puts it into the start battery. When the start battery is full, it then jumps over and charges up the lithium batteries. When the lithium batteries are full, they basically back a trickle charge into the starting battery. Now, this, while this is happening, you're getting 25 amps from the engine, you're getting 25 amps from the solar, so you have a maximum 50 amps going in at all times. If the engine's not running, you're still getting 25 amps from the solar panel. The system acts as an isolator and gives you a nice even charge. The 50 amp DC to DC charger allows you to isolate your start battery from your house bank, provides charging of the house bank and trickle charge back to the start battery. Best of all, it allows the use of mixed battery types. It uses MPPT charging to maximize the charge. Connecting the device is straightforward as there are four lug terminal connections. Just make sure you pay close attention to the order in which you connect these as connecting the solar first may cause some damage. The first connection is the common negative. NEG negative, which is for the solar panel, starter, and bank batteries. The second connection is from the house battery to the terminal marked OUT PLUS. Always make sure that this is the first battery in any parallel configuration. The third connection is from the starter battery to the terminal marked ALT positive. If you have a smart alternator, check the guide for instructions on how to connect. The last terminal connection is for the positive wire from the solar panel. Don't connect this until all the other components have been connected. There are also connections for the battery temperature, voltage, and smart ignition sensors. When you use lithium batteries, no temperature sensor is required. The Bluetooth connection is made with the RS-485 connection. The app downloads for free and will allow you to make all the necessary system customizations. The single largest investment of a solar system can be the batteries. For many years we worked with flooded cell batteries and we just got tired of having to fill them up with water and maintain them and worry about them, worrying too much of things that we have more important things to do. After all, the reason you go sailing is to have fun. So let's see if we can explain our logic on why we chose the SOK battery. We shopped around, we looked online, we saw battery prices ranging from 600 to 1100. We were skeptical. We went and investigated every single one. We watched YouTube videos, especially Will Prouse, very popular and very informative information. So we got the uh, SOK batteries, we ordered them. They were talking a 30 day delivery, not bad. We tested them and they seemed okay. Let's show you our slide on batteries. Our three batteries arrived exactly 14 days after we placed the order. We were impressed with the double case packaging and the extra closed cell foam they used for packing. Our volt test on each battery produced between 13.01 and 13.04 volts. Not a bad job. So once you start investing in a solar system, you get to a point when you say, well, how much is enough? And 
The thing with the solar system is, it's really great to have all that battery, but you need to be able to use it. So we started looking at an inverter, a charger inverter. We wanted to have the luxury of being able to plug an appliance in, make some ice cubes, make a margarita perhaps, anything like that. We just didn't want to be restricted by 12 volt. So we took a look at charger inverters. And again, there are choices out there that uh, you're going to see if you don't already have one. Uh, there are different price ranges. We chose a mid-range uh, inverter, and again, we're not advertising for Renogy. I just happen to like their products. We chose the Renogy inverter. A charger inverter is a definite game changer when it comes to life on a sailboat. Used wisely, the possibilities are endless. Besides being able to make margaritas, we can cook using induction, make morning coffee, plug in our laptops, watch TV, and even do laundry. When on the water, this charger inverter provides a faster way to recharge using any generator. No need to worry about power interruption when switching power sources and it's auto start capable for those generators that come with that. You'll need some space to store it though, it's a beast and weighs 65 pounds. It comes with a remote switch so you have the option to control it if it's mounted in a hard to access spot. The key to using an inverter wisely is to understand the precise amount of energy to be used. Calculate the estimated minutes of runtime for each 120 volt device and keep it handy for future reference. Divide the watts by 12 volts to determine the amp hours. Then add on the energy cost of the inverter which in this case is 10%. Now divide that amount by 60 and voila, you now have your cost per minute of energy. Mixing our margarita costs less than 1% of our total energy bank. Hmm, that's a lot of margaritas. Of course, don't forget to calculate the cost of making the ice. Just remember to use the correct gauge wiring and add fuses and bus bars where needed and you'll find solar system installation is easy. Plan your installation carefully and start enjoying life without shore power, even at marinas. Well, thanks for watching everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment or ask us and reach out to us on YouTube or Sailing Cayenne 2 on Instagram. Part 2 will be coming once the weather warms up and we can get to work and install the panels uh, and do the batteries, install the inverter, and we'll be doing a complete video presentation of that. In the meantime, be safe, happy traveling, see ya.